Hello YouTube, Mr. Evans here with my vlog number 107, I believe. If not, I'll put the correct number in the description. Um, or, no, I won't even put it in the description, just read the title. <laughs> It'll have the correct number there. Um, today is Wednesday, and the time is about 6.10 or so. My watch is not turning on, but, uh, oh, I can check on my phone. The time is 6.21, not 6.10, 6.21. So probably going to be getting out of here by about 6.30, which is uh, not bad. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Um, to check in about the day, uh, the day went well. I'm quite pleased with how well today went. Not perfect, not by any means, and I see problems that I'm like, I gotta stop putting them off, I gotta just jump right in and fix them, but um, they didn't stand in the way of me being able to do my job so much today, so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with how well today went. Uh, I would read the wonder quote of the day, except I realized, you know what I've been doing is I've been checking the date on my whiteboard to know what day to read. And the problem with that is I reset that date to be ready for the next day immediately <laughs> after school is over. So I've been reading the wrong dates and reading you the wrong quotes. So the one that is supposed to be for today, I actually read uh, yesterday, unfortunately. Today's, uh, so I, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, read uh, just a different quote that's not from the book, but just so you know what you missed, this is the one that I should have read on uh, Monday. Find your greatness. And how does this play into teaching? Well, it plays into the quote that I picked for today, which is not where I thought it was. Um, but anyways, here, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me pull it up. Here we go. This is the one. Every caring adult, oh, sorry, every kid is one caring adult away from being a success story by Joseph Shipp. And I like this quote because I think this plays into one of the things that got me started in, uh, te well, not even really got me started in teaching, but kind of got me thinking about it. See, Before I ever set foot in a classroom, I was working at summer camp. And if you wind back the clock to about, oh man, I don't even know, 2010, 11, something like that, um, I was working at summer camp. And after my first year working, uh, oh, I guess I should explain that this was a Boy Scout camp. And the area I was working was part of my job was to teach um, basic Scout skills, including knot tying. Knot tying is always, it, it's, it's, it's tough because just teaching, just, just knowing how to learn how to tie a knot is a skill on its own. Uh, knowing how to do things like error correct and how much tail to leave and where to, so it's, it's, it's a whole mess. Um, and there was one day, so uh, after I had uh, finished my first year, they asked me to step up and take over the area and then I was in charge of helping other people to teach these skills. And one day, one of my, uh, the uh, people working in my area who was doing not stay uh, came up to me and he said, you know, I, I don't know what to do. This, this student is just not at all um, doing anything that I say. Um, and I said, you know, it's fine. Just go work with the rest of your class. I'll go work with that student. And he, one-on-one, -on -one, worked so well that he surpassed um, the speed that everybody else had set. And he actually caught up and was able to rejoin the rest of the group. He was using um, error correction strategies, which are like, that's an advanced skill. He was also predicting when something is gonna go wrong, like, oh, whoops, I didn't go far enough there, or oops, I didn't pull hard enough. Um, it, it just blew my mind. And it, it was just so weird to me, so weird to me that this student who had been completely written off as like, the, I, this student cannot be helped. Um, to, to, because that, that, that counselor had never done that before and he never did it after. Um, but to the point where he was like, I can't. Um, 
could, could then just just with a change in instructional method, just with a change in one on one, um, he was able to far exceed everybody else. And I think that was part of the moment that hit me that maybe what's really going on here is some students just aren't getting what they need. I think, though, that when I formed that, I was a little bit naive. I still believe it. I still believe that every student could be successful if you just give them what they need. Um, specifically them, what they need. If they're with the right people, in the right system, in the right environment, um, they can learn, they can be successful. The issue, though, is that I've, I've come to realize since then, I think the sort of unspoken supposition is I can give them what they need. And having actually worked in a classroom and worked with these students, I've come to realize uh, I don't want to. Go, I don't want to say I can't help any student because that's just not. That's not it. There's something I can do for every student, but I'm also not so um, so self-centered as to believe that I'm the perfect teacher for every student. Um, and I think sometimes when we say that, what we hear, is, what what that's seen as is like it's giving up. It's like I'm going to give up on this student because that student's not learning. Um, when in reality, it's more like I'm, I'm recognizing that I can pound as hard as I want, right? I can pound the nail as hard as I want. But if this student is a screw, all of my pounding is not going to work. Or even if it does, it's not going to lead to the same result as it would if the student had just had, if, if you just used a screwdriver, just like if the student had been with a teacher that was, uh, their teaching style and their personality and where they come from was more ideally suited to how that student would learn, um, the student would be more likely to be successful. And yet at the same time, we push ourselves and I think we have to push ourselves, right? Because it's like, you, you can't, you, you can't just assume that no, st like if, if, if some students aren't learning from you, you can't just assume that, well, those students under no circumstances would have learned from me. It's like, I, if I develop myself enough and I pick up enough skills, I can be more useful to a wider subset of students, not subset, but a wider group of students. Um, so there's that kind of tension, you know, that's like, how hard do I push? You know, how much do I assume I can uh, really do the right thing by a student? So it, it's something that we're, we're evaluating. I feel, I feel like we have to constantly evaluate it, you know? Um, there was something else I was gonna add and now I feel like I'm forgetting it. Oh, wait, I remember now. Um, the other thing that I, uh, the, the, again, unspoken supposition and that original um, idea, that original philosophy of teaching, which again, bear in mind, I still hold to it. But another thing that has changed is I also thought that um, when I said they're not getting what they need, I meant in the learning environment. Like if I just teach them the right way. And now I've come to realize that there is a lot more going on in every student's life than just what happens in the classroom. In fact, it almost seems sort of, um, what's the word, short-sighted of me to have thought originally like if I just teach each student the right way, they're gonna be fine. When maybe, there are other changes that are outside the classroom that, that need to happen, that if they did happen, could help that student be successful. So, while it is true that every kid is one caring adult away from being a success story, The question we also ask ourselves is, am I going to be that caring adult? Or is that going to be somebody else? And it's hard to know for sure. 
you know, and I feel like, you know, when, when, when problems crop up, I see a student's not doing well in school, it's like, I'm always asking myself, how hard, uh, like, like, uh, like what, how, how, in what ways can I push myself? Wow, that took me a while to arrive at that, didn't it? In what ways can I push myself to be able to help this student be successful, rather than looking at it as I am part of a collective, you know? I am one-sixth of a student's schedule. Um... Is that right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, one-sixth of a student's schedule. Um, one-seventh if you count, you know, lunchtime. Um, and, and it's just like, the, the, there's, there's so many ways uh, in which this student is influenced on, on a daily basis, you know, that um, I, I, but any one teacher in particular doesn't bear the responsibility of that uh, student's entire well-being. And I think it's truer than ever, that other uh, saying that I'm sure you've heard before, it takes a village to raise a child. A whole village. There is not like one, so it, it, it's true, it takes one caring adult, but that caring adult comes in when the circumstances are right. Because it's also true that if a student, oh, I think it's true that if a student meets that person, the person that's going to be the, the changing force in their life, but meets them at the wrong time or under the wrong circumstances, that person may not be as effective. And even if they become a success story, it may not be as successful. First impressions, for example, are a big deal. You know, a lot of, I, th I think, you know, students come in on the first day and they're like, okay, what's this teacher going to be like? And it even, it stays that, honestly, I would say that first impression mentality lasts really all year long. Because at any point, a student might go, okay, so the way Mr. Evans acted today is going to be the way that I act in his class. Or, like, I'm going to act in his class based on the assumption that that's what he's like. Um, and it's tough um, working with that. But I try. I say that to myself a lot. I say, I try. I'm trying. You know, maybe things aren't going well always, but I'm trying. And I would like to be that caring adult for as many people as I can. Or at least help them get to the point where they can meet that caring adult. Because every student deserves a shot at success. And even though I can't provide that shot to all of them, I feel like keeping that goal in mind helps me to do the best that I can do. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. Uh, I think that I got a little rambly and disjointed at the end there, so my apologies. I said I'd be out by 6.30 and it's 6.34, so I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog right there. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye, YouTube.